watching the video last week and all the great feedback I've received. It'll be a bit different than last week's video on football shirts. This week I'm going to do it on the uh, best Premier League team for the, of the season so far. It won't be just based on stats alone, it'll also be on how the player is playing for the team itself. It's been a bit mad with uh, obviously not having no fans in the stadium, but with the football still being on, there's been some great football on the show. Um, so let's get into it. I'm going to start off with the goalkeeper, obviously. The goalkeeper that I would would have thought I was putting in the list, I'm not. It's actually Martinez at Aston Villa. If you would have said to me at the start of the season that Aston Villa would have had a go as good of a season as they have had, I would have laughed in your face after struggling to stay up last season. Getting a keeper in like Martinez, I didn't know whether or not he would have had a good impact on it, but considering he was a second choice goalkeeper for Arsenal, but getting eight clean sheets in the season so far and being a, a forefront in having as good of a defence as Aston Villa have had, it, it's, it's great to have him at the back. He's made some great saves every week and I think that anybody that's got him in the fantasy team will, um, will tell you that <laughs> it was a great choice to obviously have him. Going on to the right back now, and this was a difficult choice. There's no standout right backs in the league. The usual p players that you would probably thought about your likes of Walker, Wan Bissaka, or uh, Alexander Arnold probably not been as good as they may have been last season. But I think that the player that I've put in, considering he was let go by Spurs last season on loan and then obviously been transferred out now. To go to Southampton and to perform as well as he has done on a consistent basis, I, I put Kyle Walker-Peters in at right back. He's come on leaps and bounds from just a young lad at Spurs to now being um, a starting right back in the Premier League. Southampton's defence this season has been nothing short of remarkable and I think that having players like him who can attack as well as defend, it just gives them a different option and I think that's why that he should be in, a, in the team anyway. The first centre back of the um, in in the team is a uh, Bednarek. Now uh, Bednarek at Southampton, he's he's been the most consistent centre back in the league. He's defensively sound. I think that he's solid at the back. He doesn't make any rash challenges, which is something that a lot of players struggle with in the Premier League. He's got eight clean sheets in the league. Obviously, the same same amount as as Walker Peters, and they've played near enough every game. Southampton have done a really good job, obviously, to make it as, as solid at the back. They are turning into a really, really solid team. And I'm sure that when I do this video for the actual team of the season, I'm sure that he'll still be in that team anyway. Um, my next centre-back would be Ruben Diaz. Now, I have picked Ruben Diaz for the fact that since we signed him, he's been as absolutely solid as a rock at the back. In the past, we signed Mangala from Porto, and I, everyone was signed singing his praise, he's saying he was one of the best centre-backs that we probably would have signed at the time and he turned out to be horrendous. I was I was so worried that he was, might have been another man gala but since he's been partnered with John Stones I've, we've looked so solid at the back. I've not seen us as solid in defence since probably we've had Vincent Company. I think that 43 million or whatever it was that it cost to sign him. It was money well spent and I think we needed someone at the back who was as solid as Ruben Diaz. He's brought the best out of John Stones and I'm sure it's given Laporte that competition that he needs. I think that it's only going to be good for us and we'll, we will be challenging for the title at the end of the season. At left back, I've gone for Aaron Cresswell. Now, the reason I've gone for Aaron Cresswell over Chilwell, just because he's been so consistent over the last few years, I think that this season... He's been one of the key key players in the team for, for David Moyes and West Ham. When he's getting forward, he do, he's such a threat going forward. And also defensively, he's, he's really, really, really good. He's been there for so long. I'm, I'm surprised he doesn't get noted as one of the best English left-backs we've got. Nobody really thinks of him as, as someone that can be starting for England every game. I think with Ben Chilwell going to Chelsea for such a high price and obviously being the age he is, everybody thinks of him automatically. Whereas I think that Ben Aaron Cresswell is getting forward and he can he can take free kicks, he can cross the ball, he can get assists, which as he's shown he's got four this season. I think he'll he'll get more and more throughout the season. I'm sure he'll be up there for top assists. He has just edged it for me. I think if if the second half of the season Ben Chilwell obviously comes into his own, I think he may. Um, obviously at the end of the season but when I do this again he might get in front of him but at this moment in time halfway through the season um, Aaron Cresswell gets in there at left back. 
Now, uh, my formation is 4-3-3. Most teams do have wingers anyway, so um, it would have been difficult to go away from that. The, the centre midfielders is just a flat line, so it'd be my first centre midfielder who'd be on the right is uh, Jack Grealish. Um, now, I, th I don't think anyone can argue the point that Jack Grealish has been one of the best players in the Premier League this season. He's been so influential on Aston Villa and assisting and, and scoring goals and, and just being a part of the movement. I think that him and John McGinn work well together in midfield. Jack Grealish, he's, he, there's no surprise that he's, he's being touted to go for £100 million to Man United and all other clubs like that across England. Jack Grealish's skills just do the talking for him and I think that as much as he has off the field, on the field, he's top quality and I think that England would be right to just play him in every game. However, he does let himself down a lot of the time. The next centre midfielder is Kevin De Bruyne. Um, now, Kevin De Bruyne is arguably one of the best players in Europe and probably the world. His passing range is unbelievable and this season he might not have scored as many goals as some of the other players that will be in, in the team but his influence on the pitch, nobody can argue his passing ability and, and how many assists he gets throughout the season. He's chimed in with eight assists this season and there's no doubt that he'll get more and more as City are playing so much better at the moment. I think that that he'll only score more goals and also get more assists. The next centre midfielder is Bruno Fernandes. Since he's joined Man United, has made such a difference. He he makes everything look so simple. He carries the team quite a lot. Before they they were missing something in midfield. I think that Pogba doesn't give him anything because I don't think he really wants to be there. Obviously, scoring eleven goals this season. I know most of them are penalties. To get seven assists as well, it shows just how much. His game is, he's, he's versatile, he plays, he can he can tackle, he can move the ball forward and he can he can do it in the final third when he needs it. Man United, if they didn't have him, they wouldn't be where they are at the moment. I think that he shows up every week, home or away. On the right wing, I've got uh, Mo Salah. Um, now, I think that um, each week he, he performs every week, every time you see him on the team sheet. You always worry that he'll score a goal or set a goal up or, or just he just intimidates the opposition. Just knowing that he can do something from nothing. As much as I, it hurts me to say it, he's, he's been a, a great addition to the Premier League. He scored 13 goals this season and I'm pretty sure that he'll score. He will score up to 30 goals this season. I, I, I have no doubt in that. And that's why Salah gets in the team at, on the right. On the left, I've gone for Hyung Min Son. This season's been... I think every season he's been unbelievable for Spurs. Each season he just gets better and better and better. And I think that no one can argue his skills that he's got. He gives so much to the team. He's so fast. He can dribble past so many people. He can score goals. He can set goals up. He's got five assists so far and he's also scored 12 goals. Him and Kane, the partnership that they've got going on together, it's just frightening to watch as a... As, an, as a fan of City, it's frightening to think of what they can do. To stop them, it's, it's a difficult one because no, you don't know how to stop them because they're two totally different players. If Son can stay injury-free, I'm sure that they'll be up there for winning the league as well. The centre-forward is uh, Harry Kane. Now, um, he's assisted 11 times and scored 10 goals so far. So he's involved with everything that Spurs do well in the final third. I think that he's only going to score more goals this season if he stays injury-free. Harry Kane's changed his game a lot recently. He's dropped a lot deeper, but he's still scoring goals every week. It's been an absolute masterstroke by Jose Mourinho to change Harry Kane's game a little bit more by making him drop deeper, obviously. Um, it just It's just made him into a totally different player from just scoring goals. He's also been able to supply for the rest of the team. And I think that this season is going to be one of the best seasons for him. I think that he had a lot to prove this season, obviously, with having a few injuries. And I think that coming into the Euros, having Harry Kane in the form that he's in, it can only be good for us. Well, there's my team anyway. If you've got any suggestions for obviously who you would have put in the team, just drop them in the comments below. I will be doing a team at the end of the season just to see how much my team would have changed from the team that I've done halfway through. Also, if we can get as many subscribers as possible, if everyone can like and share this, the link to my uh, YouTube channel, it'd be amazing. I have got a lot of shirts being listed on my Depop, if you can go and look on them as well. If you like any of them, just drop me a message. And um, as always, thanks very much for watching. Um, see you next week. Goodbye.